Ladies and gentlemen, will you put your hands together, please, for the man that his fans call the maestro of rock. It is indeed Sir Dick Wagner. Dick, yeah. how are you, sir? <laughs> Very lovely. You have an audience there. No, it's just the three of us. Well, it's a bit of a skeleton crew, it being a Sunday. Right, uh, Dick, I'd like to start you off right back in the early days of the De Detroit rock scene, yeah? Um, all right. One of your first bands, The Frost. Yes. Please tell me about it. The Frost um, was just a natural progression of, uh, of groups that I had formed and were having success with. But I was developing a a more um, sophisticated kind of songwriting at the time, and I needed to have a, a better band. So I got together with some guys in Michigan that were, were already a band, and, and kind of joined them with them joining me. It's, it was kind of a mutual agreement that we would do all original music and uh, move forward from there. It became very successful. And I was able to do the songs that I had been writing that I didn't feel the earlier groups could play well enough. So it was, it was just kind of a, of a momentous move for me musically. And, uh, and it also was a great uh, live performance band. So the Frost became, in, in Detroit especially, and uh, all of the Midwest of the U.S. became a... Uh, you know, very iconic and uh, very uh, influential, let's say, in the, in the 1960s music scene. I think that's quite actually an understatement. You went on to do so much that when I was doing the research, I, I got overwhelmed by information, to be quite honest. I mean, the fact that you were on, well... Um, rock and Roll Animal with Lou Reed. Uh, you backed up Jerry Lee, Roy Orbison, Little Richard. Did Tina you... Turner, Meatloaf, Peter Gabriel, Etta James, Air Supply, Hall and Oates, Little Richard, Roy Orbison, Jerry Lee Lewis, Lita Ford, Frank Sinatra. The list is endless. Dick. And did you learn the Duck Walk? Is what I want to know. If you were... <laughs> did you learn I the did. Duck Walk? I, I took that from Chuck Berry. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> I, I played dates with Chuck Berry too. Um, I've I've been around for a long time, and uh, you know, still here, still still rocking, still rolling. Good. A lot of guitarists are sort of famous for playing one guitar, whereas you are not so much. You, you seem to have a vast collection. Is there one that you always turn back to and love more than any other guitar? I have a 1968 Les Paul Standard. That'll do it. Gibson Gibson Les Paul, which is you know my favorite guitar in the world. Oh. Just because of the sound, I mean, it plays beautifully, but the sound it just sings. I mean, it's just got, it's so melodious that uh, that's my favorite guitar. Yeah. While I was uh, Dick, while I was going through your um, discography, as it were, I spotted something which I really want, and it says it's unreleased. Apparently, you did a couple of tracks you uh, produced, composed, and played guitar on two unreleased Steve Perry tracks. Is this right? This is correct. Yep. They, they sit in the archives. They've never been released. Um, Steve Perry was uh, wanting to write some songs for a new album for CBS, and he and I got together, wrote these songs, and then I took them in the studio, produced them. They turned out to be you know, fabulous records, and he he took them up to CBS. They loved them and wanted to release them, but then he wanted to do something else. He wanted to get together with some young players. You know, I was still I was getting older then. He wanted to get together with some young guys and write with them. I mean, I I have no idea why he would change his mind based on the, the music that we made. Because it was really a sensational. These two songs are sensational. Mm. And, I'd really um, like to hear them. I'd he like to break in and find them. <laughs> well, I'm going to have to try to find them myself and send them to you. Yes, please. Yes. You know, I'd love, love to have you hear them. I mean, they're really great. But um, for some unknown reason, he just uh, went completely in another direction. Right after we finished doing this stuff, he was—he seemed to be so happy with what we had written and, and recorded 
But when he went to the record label, he wanted to do something else. And so therefore, the music that I did for and with him never got released. Um, now, you had a very, very special relationship with a man called Steve Hunter. Um, would you tell us about that, please, Dick? Steve and I, yeah, sure. Uh, Steve and I met at a, at a festival called Goose Lake. It was a 200,000 people. It was a festival near Detroit um, back in the 60s. I couldn't tell you which exact year it was, maybe 67, 68. And uh, I was backstage when Mitch Ryder was playing and Steve Hunter was playing guitar with him. That was the Mitch Ryder in, in Detroit. It was the name of the band. So I heard this guitar playing from backstage and I'm saying, boy, that guy is great. Who is he? And it turns out it was Steve Hunter. And so we met then. And then a couple months later, we met again in Florida, in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, at a, a little biker bar that, that I was playing with my band, Ursa Major. Mm -hmm. And Steve Hunter came walking in one night. He was on the road with the Chambers brothers, and they just came by the club that I was playing. And so I said, hey, Steve, it's good to see you again. And I invited him to come up on stage and, and just kind of jam with me. And we did for like two, oh, two and a half hours, just, just incredible guitar playing between the two of us. And that sort of cemented the idea of Steve Hunter and I really working together, which we did a few months later with uh, on the uh, Berlin album by Lou Reed, produced by Bob Ezra. So then we got, so we did that, and then we were hired by Lou Reed to become part of his new band, and uh, so we did a couple of weeks of rehearsal and immediately flew to Europe and did a European tour uh, flew back to the States, did a few dates in, in the States, ending up in the, at the Brooklyn Academy of Music in, in uh, New York City and recorded the Rock and Roll Animal album. And a legend was born. And a legend was born. I mean, just from that simple sequence of events, Steve Hunter and I then began doing more work together. Actually, Lou, Lou fired I know he fired me. I think he fired the whole band <laughs> because he, he he didn't want the rock and roll animal. He started to decry it as being junk, and and he didn't like it at all. He thought it was bad interpretations of his songs. Doesn't matter what the rest of the world thinks. Lou didn't like it, and so he fired us all. And uh, <laughs> so uh, immediately thereafter. I, I went home and started writing songs, and I had a bunch of songs written. I went to Alice Cooper's manager, thinking I could maybe interest Alice in some of my songs, and his manager hired me to write, co-write with Alice and to become his uh, band leader. So I had to put a new band together for Alice, and because they were going to take him solo and, and dump the original band. Uh, so they hired me to put a new band together, and of course, immediately, I put the Lou Reed band, the Rock and Roll Animal band together, and brought them over to Alice Cooper. And so now it's the Lou Reed Rock and Roll Animal band backing <laughs> Alice Cooper, only we call, now we call it the Nightmare Band. Fantastic. Because it was Welcome to My Nightmare was the first record we made. <laughs> you, also, um, th you also worked with Tim Curry, that must have been an experience. That was a great experience, really. Tim is a, I mean, he's, he's brilliant. He's a great actor and a not so great singer, but <laughs> he, but he had his styling, um, and we made a very interesting record with me and Michael Kamen producing. And uh, you know, I thought it turned out great. I, I had played on one other album for Tim before then called uh, um, "Read My Lips." Was the name of the album. Well, he's nothing if not flamboyant, and you're used to working with flamboyant frontmen. Oh, oh absolutely. <laughs> and uh, Tim Curry is actually quite a good lyricist, and so collaborating with him was fun in the same way that it was collaborating with Alice Cooper, because we always came up with great songs. Right, Dick, right up to date now. After 50 years as a rock god and really living the life of, of an absolute rock star... You've written a book. It's called Not Only Women Bleed. Please tell us about it. Well, it is sort of a continuation of what we're talking about today. 
I, I speak about uh, specific stories. It's written in a kind of a, a series of vignettes, uh, which sort of categorize all my past experience in the business and a bit of my personal life and my childhood. It's, it's an autobiography, but it's it's done in a, in, a, in a vignette kind of fashion, which makes it easier to read, and you can join in the book at any point in the book and not have to start at the beginning and read to the end. I mean, it's all laid out there, and because it's an e-book, all you need to do is click on the chapter you want to read, and it'll go right there, and it'll remember, it'll remember it, so if you want to go back, it's right there. It's a very easy read, but it's a, it's a pretty complex book. As far as uh, the material, it really covers my life in the music business everywhere. I mean, from Roy Orbison and Jerry Lee Lewis and all those early uh, associations, you know, right through the whole rock of uh, genealogy, you might say. It's Alice Cooper, Lou Reed, it's the Frost, it's the Boss Men, it's uh, Ursa Major, it's everything else I've, I've done, really. And some uh, personal stories from the road and the sex, drugs, and rock and roll that uh, is, you know, the, the whole base of, of rock and roll playing live. Which is just what we um, want to read. Um, and I'm buying oh, yeah, it. Well, well, I mean, uh, one woman said to me that she was lying in her bed reading her iPad, reading my book. She thought it was wicked but compelling. Yeah, I'm and, buying uh, it. Now, Dick, <laughs> last question for you. This is something that we ask every... A You've got to be a rock star to be asked this question. Are you ready? I'm ready. What is your favourite fish? My favourite fish? Yeah. Swordfish. Oh, cool. Write that down. Well, never never had, had a swordfish. Sword fish. No, we've never had a swordfish from a rock star Brilliant. before. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> would you please say thank you to and goodbye to the one the and legend. only Dick Wagner. Dick, thank you very thank much you, indeed. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it very much.